a plenary session on making landscape relevant a story that begins with water headed by our esteemed guest of honor akshay kaul akshay kaul specializes in the field of ecological planning landscape and sustainable architecture and possesses more than 27 years of work experience in india and usa and more than 23 years of teaching experience he has worked for globally renowned office of peter water walker and partners usa on international projects in asia europe and us he has res- uh, received many international award among which the award for living design city competition for sustainable cities 2011 is the notable one he has won national competition for master planning of campus of institute of public health and management gandhi nagar gujarat and islamic university of science and technology avantipura kashmir so our main team work is a uh, master planning site design and landscape and some urban design work uh, anything that we do we try to address environmental issues no matter what whatever the scale of the project is if it's a terrace garden we still trying to do that this one half of the project supports the other half that we do and so this one half that's the master planning landscape design and site design we try and address all these issues of water in water waste water erosion solid waste all these issues including trying to understand contextual response to being in india and about social equity this one half of the project that we do as office supports the other half which is very close to our heart that is about influencing like i said earlier government policy and direction we do a lot of capacity building across the country so i'm traveling at least 15 days in a month almost every weekend and we work a lot in the area of pedagogy research we have internship program we started a youth talk and action oriented work and a lot of the stuff we try and do is innovative in the sense that we are also experimenting all the time most of the work that is done abroad we try to bring in here in a contextual way so i'm just sharing with you very quickly one of the things that we do you know of the so many other things that we do uh, this is from just last year how we have engaged ourselves in the other half so any project that we do whether it's planning site design or landscape design it starts with with water as the first drop of water falls on the ground our planning starts with that and we try to make landscape hence relevant and try to mainstream environmental issues resolve them through planning site design and landscape so we try in other words to make ecology mainstream part of landscape because we value all forms of life and we think everyone has is equal in one way or the other and every form of life is equal any project site that we get today is completely disturbed all the three sites are from the scenic valley of kashmir but you can see how they are completely disturbed if a project site is not disturbed through infrastructure development or settlements around it by the time construction gets over that's what we get in hand it's a rape murder maiming of the site and these are all our project sites that we have worked on and the first act of intervention of human beings like making a boundary wall completely destroys the ecology of the site you know as architects we are ignorant about it but this is what happens to the site everything is destructed the first act of infrastructure laying destroys the complete ecology and the whole watershed is fragmented and everything around with it the soil is finished this is a comparison of 1911 wetlands of kashmir to 2011 and you can see how the destruction has happened so i'm sharing with you one project through which and then i'm going to take you issue wise and then in the end talk about one or two projects time permitting so this is iskon site in wada maharashtra outside bombay all the water 
ponds were disconnected, fragmented completely. We start with reconnecting them, the disjointed pieces of the landscape, especially the water. And we do that in so many ways, bioswales, detention ponds, retention ponds, gully plug, and in numerous amount of ways for soil and water conservation. And in this particular project, we did it in so many ways. This is, this is a project in Bangalore. Uh, what I want to share with you, and this was a question that was asked earlier. Through the, the innumerable capacity building workshops that we have done, we have touched more than 100, no, about 1,000 people in site planning. And I got a phone call to yesterday evening saying this. So Pish was asking, what is the impact? This is one of the impacts that you can see when you go out you reach out selflessly and you can see this is from one of the leading sustainable architecture firms in India. So they're not touching the project, they're not touching the land until they get a landscape architect who's environmentally sensitive to educate the client before they walk in. This is a 100 acre project uh, in Uttarakhand. So on Google we mapped all the water, every bit of it that flows, where we could catch, what is the different kinds of landscape structures. I mean, vegetation as well <clears throat> and we educated the client you have the opportunity to build a thousand plots or you can build 50 so he's only building 60 of them on this side the South Asian University project that we won uh, is part of the South Asian uh, competition and you can see this is a very very urban project in Delhi about 100 acres this is a ways in which we are working with water I think more, more than 800 water recharge structures we are creating. It's a government project and they're doing it for the first time, uh, this kind of an approach. That's the scale of the buildings and the urbanization that's happening. But what I'm trying to say is that you can do in any project if you like. And that's the level of detail in which we go, how the water is coming down from the roof of the building, how it goes into the gully plug, how we take into these, into these, recharge areas, the overflow comes into the landscape, there's a perforated French drain and only the overflow reaches. So by the time it reaches the collection area, it's almost recharged the entire ground. So we've done this for extensively for every little uh, paved area in the campus. So our landscape is informed by water. Every little decision from master planning to the smallest detail, uh, which is what Vasha was saying, we, don't, we try not to lose track of it by the time you come to the execution and to the detailing of it. So similarly, we don't go into planting just like that. So we study where the erosion is happening. These are the higher areas. This is, this is still Iskon Govardhan. So before we make any of these key decisions of how erosion is happening because of air and water, uh, we think how to do the planting then. And we looked at the Google and found out where the vegetation is outside the site, where it is inside, where to put in new, one, so that we create this contiguous open space, which is green, quote unquote, so that it becomes places for green infrastructure as well as for recreation, as well as for biodiversity enhancement. So this was done by Aniket, one of his research students did the study, and we looked at it very closely before we were designing the Hyderabad metro station, trying to understand how birds move in urban areas. And this is how we created the, uh, the, the columns and the median um, for designing of the uh, for the metro, so that we had we studied how the bird perches, how it how there needs to be moisture, grassland, this that and the, the all the stuff that we were talking about in the morning, we tried to put into practice in this urban area. Apart from uh, you know traffic calming, so we took colors like white, uh, recharging the ground with water vegetation, nesting, perching, and you know. So this is the design that we came up with based on extensive uh, research work. And so by the time, because uh, the, the, the creepers and climbers will take a lot more time to, to grow. So by, for that, we have perching areas designed as part of art for the columns. And that these columns, uh, which will, with the, the metal work then becomes like a part of artwork for the city. So, so through planning, we create space for 
for uh, ecological restoration to happen. And, and the second step that we do is, which we were trying to answer the question is, we create a structure in the landscape which is not disturbed then. And that's what we call the site design. These are the so many ways in which we put into place for the first, and for me, uh, to, it's most important to put the water back into the ground and to get the wetlands in place. Once we have that, then you can bring in moisture, then you can bring in vegetation, then you can arrest the siltation, then you can uh, bring the wildlife back. So these are different projects in which we have done so many ways of, of restoring the water cycle on the site, which is almost always disturbed completely. I'm sharing with you this, this project in Shiraz, Bangalore. This was done 2004, and you can see when we walked around the site, we found that there was much more moisture in certain areas. So this, this is like 2004, we showed it on Photoshop to the client. And then we did the water management and restored the whole Nala, reconnected it from one part of the site to another. Well, there's five minutes left. So <coughs> this is a restoration of, the, of, of a Kangra project. You can see before and after. Uh, through a bioengineering process. We do about 10 or 15 kinds of techniques for bioengineering. You can see bamboo grip walls here. And finally, this is what it looks like after restoration in a matter of three to four years. And this is Devanya project. Oh, thank you. I misread it. <laughs> okay, uh, so I'll go back. <laughs> So this is the Devanya project. Uh, what was most key, which is really very, uh, now people come to us only if they want environmentally sensitive landscape. So it has taken us good number of years, but you know, <laughs> we tell the clients if they want to do a kind of project, then we are not the right people to actually come uh, for that kind of project. So once we had mapped this, we created these, this landscape structure in which through master planning, if you see, around about 20 meters on each side of the swale, there are no buildings. And the length of the road is much longer because we did not want to cut the swales very close to each other. And I, I have found, and I have to admit this to everyone, is that I, what I feel is that it's not that the client doesn't want to do it, and I don't find it difficult to convince the client at all to do an ecological sensitive project. Often you don't even have to tell him because it doesn't cost you anything more. You can easily slip in whatever you want to do. He'll be ignorant about it, but you'll get all the results. Uh, <clears throat> but if you start telling him, they really get involved in it. And we have, we have many people who have converted their religion to, to ecology across the whole country, and that includes a lot of architects. And we find it most easy to convince the client, actually. You don't, you don't have to tell him, actually. <laughs> no, but, but sincerely, honestly, but it doesn't take because they understand. They want to do it. They don't, they have, they don't know how to do it, and they are, they are skeptical, and they don't know the cost implications of that. So if we're able to kind of address those issues in a logical way, in a time frame, give them what they want like any other project, then I don't think they resist it. And in the second project, they want to do it on their own. If they hire us. So this is the, this is a part of our whole thing is about social equity. Uh, we don't hire one single contractor for any project which is like a big headache for us, but we hire <laughs> not really, the, the term is petty contractors, but I don't want to use that term at all. If we hire many agencies to do our project. In this case, we had about 100 laborers working on the project. And we found out somebody who had done a water shed management project. We brought him, we trained him the way we wanted to do it. And we've done 350 structures, even though the first building has still not come in. But we've been able to put this whole watershed uh, into place, and it has only cost us about 8,000 rupees to do it. And so we'll be happy to know that the stream is perennial now, and the amount of water that was reaching the village earlier, they have much more. The hand pump oozes out water. They don't need to do the ulta thing that you see in the selfies, which Hema Malni does it. And so this is like, like when we started, and this is by the time in the monsoon. 
I'll take you through some before and afters. Uh, so the road construction in the hill, this is a typical gradient in this place is two is to one, not one is to two or one is to three. So the slope is more than 45%, 60% in this place. Uh, not an iota of cement, concrete retaining wall has been used. Uh, we collaborated with somebody earlier on that project that you saw uh, through a structural engineer who had studied in Australia, lives in Nepal, uh, wants to make money in India, we are fine with it. Uh, so we collaborated, we learned, we did workshops, we trained people and then in this project he came in for and we did three, four workshops and now everyone on site knows how to do it. We don't have to teach him and through the workshops that we do, the architect now teaches site planning workshops to other people. So we were happy about it. The whole site is managed by an architect who's not even 26 years old. And he has learned all these techniques. The client fired the most you know, expensive PMC and this young architect is managing the whole site. Simply because he worked, he trained under us for nine months and then he worked with someone for one year. But he has that sensitivity. All I'm trying to say is that it's possible to sensitize people uh, and move on. And you can see before and after, you know, all the techniques like fascine and palisade and brush layering and hydro seeding, which we'll show you. Can you imagine we did huge research? There's only one person in India who's got truck and who can do hydro seeding for you. And he can't come into this place. He buys his seeds from America. He buys his fertilizer from America. So he's completely so expensive that we can't even hire him. And, and I went there in April uh, and it's unbelievable the kind of transformation that has happened to the site. Not a single retaining wall. And any material that we have used to make the loose boulder uh, retaining wall of two feet. Uh, and we also need to have scales. Uh, these toe walls which are two feet high are made by Nepali workers because they know how to work in mountains. We don't have skills to work in mountains. We have people who go from the plains to work in mountains and so there is disaster in the mountains. And I don't want to talk about a controversial uh, article here. <laughs> so this is before and after. The building has not come in but we've kind of stabilized it just before the monsoon so that the hill doesn't topple down and it, it looks like you know it's just vegetated no but we've done a very different kind of vegetation uh, planting which is equivalent of doing a miyawaki on a slope this is what i want to share this is 2017 january less than two years look at the slope uh, one and a half years this is what you had and i just went there in april and now we, because like we are discussing and like Vasha said that there are no seeds, there are no planting, we have to go and collect this. And the time span of a quote unquote typical landscape project is just two years from start to end. And you get probably two, one grass season to collect your seeds from if you know where they are, you know. That's the kind of challenge that we face. So we, we, we have to look for it all across the country. We don't get plants from one nursery. Uh, or, or the seeds and now we are using the cuttings from this particular mother uh, place for the other parts of the site. Luckily somebody filed a case, the NGT came and they said you're doing a good job so that delayed the project that's why we get the cuttings. And you can see the whole process, different techniques. This technique is called brush layering and you can see how it is stabilized. And this is the whole process which we did of hydro seeding. We talked to that guy and we said, okay, we can't afford you. You can't do it in one go. Your truck can't come. So we, we tried to do it indigenously by putting a motor in a, in a drum and then throwing, throwing through pressure, but it failed. Then we did it manually. Uh, and this whole process of mixing glue and seed and cocoa peat and and all that uh, we trained, we learned ourselves and we trained everyone else. We experimented it over a period of you know, three months and then the whole site 
uh, we kind of went ahead. And here you can see these cuttings that we bring in one day before, we store it in the tank, we separate it, we put it, we train people what size of cutting, when to cut, when not to cut. Am I moving in the wrong direction? And these are some of the workshops that we do. Uh, and you can, you can see, uh, because in this, you can see here, you know, how they're doing it manually. You can see that he's climbed on a staircase. Here he's doing it on lower ground. Here he's kind of finished. Here the staircase. Here the people from the workshops are doing it. And this is part of, you know, every single project we have to set up a nursery because, because the kind of plants that we want, we work in all the colleges in the country, we can't do it. This is a transformation journey from what I call a battlefield during construction. This is what happens on any site to the restoration of, uh, you can see the dragonfly, you can see the bee, you can see the frog, you can see the, the hives, you can see the birds coming back. There are more than 200, 300 sparrows that come in. This is a 1.3 acre site in the middle of old city of Jodhpur. But it's quite a journey, you know, you can't, you can't just do it. But we go back to the site, you know, even after the project is finished, we go back again and again and again to see what is working, what is not working. So we try and create all kinds of landscapes. Yeah, this is a nursery. Uh, that's the wetland. This is a grazing area. Paddy field in the middle of a resort, in the middle of a retreat site, because that's where you need to put the paddy. So it's not out there, the edible landscape somewhere. And we involve kids and everyone in the process of putting the paddy from the, from the nursery into the main area. This is the edible landscape in the middle of Vasant Kunj uh, in Delhi. We do that for every project, you know, where, whatever little space, even if you get a small balcony, we do, we do that. We were called to design landscape for a balcony in Calcutta. <laughs> for every power project, for almost more than 10 years, we're doing biological wastewater treatment. This is a factory. The factory is not up, but the biological wastewater treatment plant is in place. This is a soil biotechnology. We did it in collaboration with Chitra, Vishwanath from Biome Bangalore and IIT Powai. This is a different kind of biological wastewater treatment system. <coughs> this is project one, I think the world Architecture Festival Barcelona 2011 award and you can see before and after and during construction the project site you know hardcore urban project that you're talking about this is what it looked like that's the client sitting there first timer we only get first timers investors which is really very nice because they don't have that much money so we have to strive innovative and they allow us to do because they don't know anything. So that's good. They're not Yadri Gen C. So we are lucky that way. And this is what it looks like finished. So this is what I was trying to say. It's, it's culturally sensitive. It's a Rajputana Haveli that was there in Jodhpur. We borrowed the landscape ideas from where my last name comes. Uh, and then you can see how much craft of, of, of Rajasthan uh, we have incorporated into this. We've used, so if you're working, if you're working in Jodhpur, we are using just the local Jodhpur stone. Very little steel we use, very little concrete. In fact, I hardly use any steel unless it's really, so embodied energy is very low wherever we work. And, and in this case, again, uh, the, the stone contractor is somebody who's local from there. And uh, he's a craftsperson, he has a team. We've been working with him now for the fourth project over a span of 10 years now. So we still know him. And you will not know where the manholes have discovered, I mean, disappeared. You will not know where we are recharging the rainwater. So it's all integrated. So it's a big headache for us, you know, as, as a landscape architect, because from the conceptual stage, we try to, we do actually all the stormwater management through landscape design only. and. And we kind of give direction to all our services people uh, how to handle it. Then they bring back the drawings, then we send them, we modify them. So we integrate it from the conceptual. Uh, not always possible to do it, there are goof ups. So when you bring a project like this and it gets a global uh, acclaim, 
This is the Bowley next door that the client then cleaned up tons and tons and tons of debris. And it's a public space now next to it. And then because of that, there are restaurants that have come around the Bowley. The whole street around this Ras Jodhpur has completely transformed and people want to visit there. So just one, one drop can actually make that change. And I see all these drops in this audience here sitting quietly today. But the whole idea is that that drop, you can transform the whole society if you really want to do it. And I think each one of you actually wants to do it. It's not that you don't want to do it because it gives that happiness to you inside, deep inside that is can't be replaced. It's just a matter of sticking on to it. You know, Just pick up one thing and keep moving. And so you'll see the how we have used reeds over here uh, to for privacy as well as so you have frogs, you have turtle, you have fishes in the small pond next to the swimming pool, and pigeons do come in to drink water from here. We do the lighting design as well and try and work uh, with the lighting design from the beginning. And you can see the Marangar fort in the backdrop, the Haveli, the landscape during day and night. And I'll take you through one more project. So this is a hardcore urban project in Jodhpur. And now this is another project in Jaisalmer, about 20 kilometers outside Jaisalmer. I think we finished this also about 10 years back, a little bit more. So this is what the, the outside landscape looks like. If you want to experience it, though, you'll have to spend 50000 a night. And this is what, so in this case, we've done master planning, landscape, architecture and part of space planning for the interiors, some aspects of interiors. And this is what we did. And over a period of one year, two years, we collected seeds. Uh, so this is the tent Trade Resorts operates from, I think, September end to March end. And so it had to be designed in such a way that everything can be brought down and stored. Everything is stored below the swimming pool. Uh, just the, the pipes are left. We worked very closely with everyone in this case. And that's the, that's the rustic landscape of wilderness that we created. So all I'm trying to say is you can mainstream anything, you know, as part of the ex experience. So it's just about first being convinced, you know, ourselves. So the pool was placed so that you get the sunset view. This is the, 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 the most expensive suite. So we're working in Jaisalmer. We're working with the Jaisalmer stone, but in 10 different ways. Uh, and I will end with this one. <laughs>